Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 22nd of June 2011. I forgot to mention yesterday that it was the summer solstice, and now the Sun is moving south again and the days are getting shorter. Also, 33 years ago today, Sharon, Pluto's largest moon, was discovered. According to the GOES X ray plot, the only significant activity that we've had in the last 24 hours is the decay of the sea flare that we saw yesterday. The flare lasted for an incredible 16 hours. I have seen some longer flares, but they are very rare. It has been confirmed that the coronal mass ejection associated with this event is heading straight at the Earth. This rather colourful plot shows the predictive progress of the coronal mass ejection through the solar system. Perhaps I should take a little time to describe what we're seeing here. The dot in the centre is the Sun, and the yellow dot at about 3 o'clock is the Earth. The colourful spirals on the plot are the different types of solar wind, blue being a low density solar wind, and red being a high density solar wind. You can see the coronal mass ejection of the bright arc about halfway between the Earth and the Sun. This model estimates the speed of the coronal mass ejection to be 640 kilometers per second. That's actually relatively slow for a coronal mass ejection, and it will likely hit the Earth sometime early on the 23rd. That's early GMT time. No is predicting that this will produce a minor storm with a KP of about 5, but that will be enough to produce fairly substantial aurora at high latitudes. So now let's take a look and see why the Sun has been so quiet. We still only have three numbered regions on the disk. 1236 is by far the largest, but I think it's showing signs of decay. Regions 1239 and 1240s are just small groups, and they seem to be decaying at the moment. I've seen no new regions emerge, and there doesn't seem to be any sign of any new regions coming over the east limb. Thus, it's not particularly surprising that we have low levels of activity. The low level of activity is reflected in both in the sunspot and the magnetic movies. Particularly in the magnetic movie, you can see there's no evolution in any of the three numbered regions. And there doesn't seem to be any new regions emerging that have the potential to form spots. And as I have said before, you either require growth in an existing region or the emergence of a new region to produce flares. Again, the AIA data demonstrate the low level of activity. There isn't very much going on in either the Transition Region movie or the Coronal movie. However, I should point out there are some missing data in these, and so we may be missing some of the events going on. Next, we turn to the data from the Soho Coronagraphs and look at the last 24 hours. There again, it doesn't seem to be a great deal going on, except for right at the very end, there seems to be a coronal mass ejection from above the north limb. However, we don't have any data to determine where that came from, so that will have to remain a mystery at least until tomorrow. From the ACE data, we can see that the speed and the density of the solar wind has dropped, while the interplanetary magnetic field looks as confused as ever. So we're not as yet seeing any signs of the approaching coronal mass ejection. The NOAA 15 data show us that the auroral zone is relatively quiet and that the KP index is varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 57, the X-ray background is at B1, the radio sun is at 96 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is about 450 kilometers per second with a density of about 3.5 protons per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is varying between 1 and 3. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are still possible, but the chance of getting an M or an X flare is very low. The sunspot number I think will go lower with the decay of these active regions. Meanwhile, coronal mass ejections are likely, and a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 to 48 hours is likely as well. Looking at the composite coronal image from the Solar Dynamics Observatory and the two stereo spacecraft, we see that still there are no major regions due back for two or three days. So we can't expect new regions to be coming over the East Limb any time soon. For more details of what's going on on the Sun, check out some of the uh, links that I have in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun Today, go to my channel, and they're listed there. There are also some very useful NASA and NOAA websites that you might want to take a look at. If you want to see what the Sun looked like when it had the same face towards the Earth as it did one, two, or even three rotations ago, you can go see the previous editions of The Sun Today on the 26th of May, the 29th of April, and the 2nd of April, respectively. Today's featured global warming video discusses the role of volcanoes in global warming. The links to all of these are in the description box below. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.